What is up? My name is Matthew McCack and this is Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower where I teach you how to teach a board game. And in this video, I'll be covering Caverna, the cave farmers. Now, this is a how to teach video, meaning I'm assuming you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games. This is just a way that has worked for me and could possibly help you out if you have any sort of difficulties teaching games or this game in particular. Now, this I would consider a like medium to heavyweight uh, complexity type of game. Uh, some people might feel like this is a lightweight game, uh, which is cool, fine, but um, I'm going to t uh, pretty much run this video as though you were teaching this to players who are pretty familiar with the board gaming hobby and they've played uh, a little bit of heavier games and they might be familiar with like worker placement or uh, resource management and all that sort of uh, like jargon and stuff um, and, and they've played games with that. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into it. I always start off with the three main things. So first, the story behind the game where you are a dwarven family trying to build out your cave and start up your farm and just make a living for yourself. The objective behind the game, which is to score the most victory points by the end of the game. And now the game ends, which it ends after, well, depending on player count, it's usually 12 rounds, but sometimes it's a little bit less. And with that, I will meet you down at the table. Okay, so a couple of things before I get right into it. I know that this game can go up to like seven players, but I would recommend probably not playing with more than around four players if there are new players people learning this game. Now I have this set up for a two player game because I was just playing with my fiance and so I just kind of left it out. Um, but that's why we have the skip uh, round nine out there. But uh, I think two players is great because you could focus on just the one person if you're teaching them. But in any case, uh, I would say go up to no more than four. I would also say uh, use the boards here off to the side with like the chambers and everything. On the non-advanced side, uh, I guess it's the, the introductory side or whatever, just so that there's less going on because already there, there's a lot going on in this game, I think. And so playing with the introductory side um, could just, there's less to think about for players and, and a less feeling of being overwhelmed. But anyway, as we get into it, what's great about this game is that you have uh, you don't have all the actions out in the beginning, which is fantastic. It makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, teach the new incoming cards because they're gradually coming out each round. So you could just start off with these over here. Um, and right off the bat, when you're explaining like drift mining, right, you're, you're immediately starting to talk about tiles. And that's when uh, you when you tell them about like taking that action. That's also when you tell them about these tiles, how to orient them, how to get these bonuses, and then what you can actually do with these tiles, how like these can uh, have your dwellings or and stuff over there. So uh, the furnishing tiles that are over there, uh, can be placed onto here and then telling them about you, you don't necessarily have to tell them about these tunnels but you could let them know that later on there's going to be certain actions that will allow you to do certain things with these type of uh, cavern tiles especially when you connect two of them and then you go on explaining each one of the things and then uh, you get up to the housework uh, and this is when you know you could talk about furnishing a cavern uh, how that works uh, even more specifically in terms of the cost of getting a cavern and reminding them again that it has to go on this sort of blank space it can't go on these but other things can go here when you talk about sustenance, this is also when, because you can gain food and whatever. I mean, you can gain food at the starting player, but you probably want to make sure that you explain to them, like, hey, starting player, it doesn't automatically move around. Like, people have to, whoops, people have to actually take it. Uh, but with the sustenance, you could go more into the food and how harvesting works, that they don't have to worry about it for the first two rounds but uh, that they're going to need to feed their dwarves. I, I wouldn't go uh, much farther than that into how harvest actually works just yet. Um, I would wait uh, possibly till the next round or so, or, or actually when harvest is coming on down. <laughs> um, but we'll get into that in a second. Next up is slash and burn. This one is probably one of the uh, more difficult ones to teach. 
Um, and so you just want to explain to them how it works in terms of, you know, these these feels and everything and how you have to already, I think this is the part that uh, confuses people a lot of times, you have to already have the grain and the pumpkin in order to sow them into the fields. And you could say like, you need the seeds, right? You need the seeds in order to sow them into the fields and then they'll grow, right? Um, and then you'll let them know that you'll gain benefits from that during a harvest, which won't happen for the first two rounds. And that's about it. Now, then uh, you're going to go ahead and you'll reveal the next card. Now, if you've watched a couple of my other videos, you'll know that I'm a really big fan of stacking the deck for uh, teach purposes. So I've stacked these first three cards a little bit here. That way it is um, what I think the easiest way to get into the game to, to not have too many um, overwhelming things going on. So the first one I have is the sheep farming. This is so that you could teach, okay, now you can actually have a pasture and how that works in terms of holding animals and then you'll have these sheep, right? So uh, this is good because it goes uh, right into like, okay, you learned all these things, awesome. Now here's how to actually gain sheep um, and how to you know hold them in your meadows and things like that. And then you could explain a little bit about the uh, stable and what that does. You don't have to explain absolutely everything about the stable um, until maybe somebody takes the action or uh, if nobody takes the action you can wait until round two letting them know specifically about the boar because the stable can be uh, a lot um, and, and the boar can be a lot so I mean it's kind of up to you how you like to do it. What I like to do is I will say okay when you put out the stable, you could put it pretty much anywhere, but it can't move. And then you let them know, like, this is one of the ways you can actually keep your wild boar. And it's the only way to keep a wild boar out on uh, the forest space. And it's the only animal and way to keep anything out on these forest fields. Uh, otherwise, animals can't do that. You know, <laughs> they have to be on the meadows. Um, so that's something that I like to do. So that's the first one that I like to have come out. The next one that I like having come out is this one, is the blacksmithing, because now you get to tell them about uh, weapons and expeditions. I don't like having this to be the first card coming out because this adds a whole other layer of what players can do, and I don't like getting into that from the first round. I, I like getting, okay, so you know how to play. We've played through a whole first round and everything awesome now we're doing blacksmithing and we could get weapons you can go on expeditions and things like that so when you're talking about the logging uh space before this card comes out you could say like yes uh at some point we're going to have a car that allows you to have a weapon and go out on expeditions but for now uh you don't really get that action but once this comes out then you could go back to it and say like okay so now with this card you can actually go on the expeditions and you'll explain how the expedition works and you want to really emphasize how the expedition works in terms of the loot uh being that like okay this number here tells you how much loot you can actually get from here the level of your weapon tells you what you can get from here so yeah that that might confuse players a little bit and it might get uh some like getting used to Take some getting used to, that's the word I was looking for. But uh, if you keep reiterating it, they should be able to get it. Now, after that, so once that card comes out, you're gonna say there's no harvest this round. But starting the next round, we're going to have to uh, feed our workers, right? Feed our dwarves. Um, and, and so uh, food is going to become of essence, of the utmost importance. I still wouldn't go into how exactly harvesting goes in terms of like the field and the and the breeding and all that stuff just yet not until round three and i have ore mine construction out there um i think this just works out really well because now um i was about to say students but um the players can uh they have this action where they can get their weapons and everything, and now they can even do ore mine construction. And this is where you explain to them, okay, remember when I said uh, that if you have this type of tile out and you have two of them together, things can happen? 
Well, this is the kind of thing that can happen, right? You can actually have this or mine, you'll get the or, um, and then uh, they already now know about expeditions and everything. So it's just for that round that I actually stack the deck for those number one cards. I mean, the, uh, the game already has Wish for Children as a stacked card, so you could go ahead, place that out, explain how this works, um, and then also explaining how uh, this is specifically only for dwellings that you can furnish over here, as opposed to this uh, printed card out here. And then it's off to the races. You keep on going. Uh, I, I, this is just all random now. And then once you get to here, you can flip this over and you could say like, okay, we don't know if there's going to be a harvest or not here. So we're going to actually flip this over and let's see. So this one says, yes, there's a harvest. But once you actually get to a question mark, I, well, um, I didn't know I actually put a question mark there, but I did. Okay. Uh, I actually put these out all randomly. So once the question mark comes out, that's when you explain to them, okay, this means no harvest this round, you know? And then as more question marks come out, you explain to them what's going to happen at the end of the round there. One thing I did not mention um, is the uh, exponential growth of each of these uh, spaces, how they're going to grow and everything. But players will see it by round two that, hey, Guess what? Yes, everything is going to grow. They're going to have more and more resources. You could explain to them if you would like in terms of how many resources will come out depending on uh, the numbers here. Some players don't care um, and they'll just have you manage it and you could be like the, the game master um, and just putting it out and they, they won't pay attention to what you're doing or why. Uh, but you could let them know a little bit about why anyway. Uh, some players, they want to know uh, because they want to, you know, really understand what is going on, in which case you go in depth, um, letting them know as you're, go as you're going through it, it's like, okay, because this only has one over here, uh, I'm only going to put one stone because there's already uh, three logs here or any kind of logs here, uh, any amount of logs rather, I'm only going to put one log, but if there was none, I'd put all three out on the board and so on and so forth. Another thing I like to do is have the uh, scoreboard ready at hand for people. Now, this is, um, we have some games played, but I'll show a blank one. So usually I'll have like a blank one out um, for players. And I kind of like using this almost like a player aid in, in addition to these two player aids, which are fantastic. Um, but yes, this kind of just reminds them what you get points for. This is the most important thing. So in the beginning um, of this video, I mentioned, you know, like the object of the game is to have the most victory points. So as you're like explaining all these things, right, um, before you even get into uh, playing the game, right, so you've, you uh, put out the first card, whatever, and it's like, okay, what we want to keep in mind is all these things. These are what you could get points for. And then making sure that any unused space is a minus one, so they remember that, and any type of farm animal, and letting them know that everything is a farm animal except for dogs, uh, is a minus two, right? Um, so I like having all the players have one of these, if possible, or having it out in the middle so players can like pass it around. Doesn't really matter, um, however way that you really like to have it. Uh, but this is just a good reminder for players. It's like, okay, what do I get points for exactly? What, what gives me points? Why am I doing what I'm doing? I also like to tell players, you know, you really want to look at, uh, I'm going to turn the camera here. Hopefully it's not too shaky. So there we go. Um, you want to remind players like, or maybe let them know, you might want to get one of these things here, like um, the, one of the parlors, the chambers, whatever it might be to have some sort of goal in mind, just for the first game at least, right? It's like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'll pick up the treasure chamber and I'm gonna go headlong for rubies because I know that those are gonna give me a, an extra point uh, at the end of the game. And, and so you, you start to build some sort of um, goal uh, and, and maybe you have a couple of goals, right? Like maybe I'll do this and the weaving parlor, that way uh, I, I know I'm going for rubies and sheep or something, you know, whatever it might be. Just picking up one at least by, you know, the second round or so, I would say. Uh, so letting them know that. That way you have uh, some sort of goal in There will probably be a couple of things you're going to want to remind players as the game goes on in terms of like, 
especially the dog, how the dog works, uh, where they could go anywhere, um, and how many sheep they're allowed to carry. So you, you might want to consistently remind them of that. You'll probably want to remind them of uh, the boar again and how the stable works, wherever I put my stable, here it is, the stable, um, where that can go, what the stable does and all that sort of stuff. You'll probably also want to remind them of rubies and what they can buy you and that you could use the, the rubies at any point. It doesn't have to be your turn. Uh, so the, that's something that you might want to remind them. Uh, one thing that you'll probably also want to remind them of as well is how to get this cow or cattle, whatever it's called, uh, and that this is like pretty much the only way. Otherwise, um, you can also get it through um, expeditions, I believe. Yeah, right here. Um, if you if you have that weapon, okay. Uh, and then this is something else you'll probably want to explain to them over and over again in terms of how uh, expeditions actually work. Um, yeah, because that could be a little bit confusing. One last thing that I haven't mentioned is you do want to. So once you have the ore mine construction going, I mean the donkey doesn't come out till later. So once the donkey does come out. You will want to know that the donkey, yes, it can go out on the field here, but it can also go on your ore mines, right? So you want to let them know that it could go on the ruby mine um, or the ore mine. And at this point, they might ask like, well, how do I get a ruby mine? It's like, well, there's a card that'll come out um, about that. And then once that uh, card comes out, then you can explain the ruby mine and where it could be placed, although the card will do it for them, uh, which is awesome. But um, yeah. One thing I did forget to mention is I always also let them know like anything in this shield icon means points. That's how many points you're going to get at the end of the game for just having it in your uh, pile here, in your, uh, your what's it called, player board. Uh, so anything in a shield, those are points at the end of the game. But essentially that is it. That is how I teach Caverna. So let's meet me back at my face. And that is how I teach Caverna. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know down in the comments below how you like to teach Caverna and if you have any sort of questions for me. This has been Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower. I will catch you next time.